Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. As you know, stoves are a pretty big deal here on the channel. I've reviewed many over the years, but it's time for another ultimate comparison video. We've done a couple. Today we're going to look at upright canister stoves and we're going to look at all the different stoves I have and see how they look, how they perform, and what we think about them. And to top it all off, this is another installment of my ultimate series. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's do the ultimate upright canister stove comparison video. Thanks for watching. Sometimes you need the perfect piece of gear. Sometimes you need to make the perfect kit. And sometimes you just need the perfect cup of coffee. Gear can be confusing, but it doesn't have to be. No BS, no agenda no sponsors, just what you need to know. Welcome to the ultimate. Now, first off, I'll tell you, this is not a dedicated review of each of these stoves. I have reviews on pretty much all of them, or they will be coming out at some point in the future. If you're looking for a more detailed review, then make sure you check down below in the description. Also, obviously, this is not an exhaustive list of upright canister stoves. This is just the ones that I have. I happen to have 15 different models, and I think they're a pretty good range that many people are looking at. As always, I'm looking to add more stoves to the list, so if you have any you want me to throw on and get a new video going down the road or do a dedicated review on, make sure you leave a list down in the comments. What we're going to do is pretty simple. We'll take a look at the stove itself. We'll discuss the general specs, and then I'll tell you the benefits, I think, from each one of these. After that, we're going to boil two cups of water, We'll measure how long it takes to do so and how much fuel each of the stoves uses getting those two cups of water to a boil. The test will be conducted here in my new shop space. It's a pretty controlled environment. The temperature in here is about 70 degrees I would say. There's no wind or no draft or anything crazy so that allows for a good control. Now obviously things might suffer or some of these stoves would suffer in the wind for example but looking at a comparison, we're gonna do everything the same. We'll also use the same brand new bottle of fuel and we're gonna use the same pot, my ever new titanium mug pot, 900 milliliter variety. This happens to be a five inch diameter pot. As always, I will allow the pot to cool completely between boils and all of the tests should start today in particular with water at about 71 to 72 degrees. Y'all ready? We're about to boil 30 cups of water Let's do it. First, we'll look at this stove from Coleman. It's marked Sterno, but it's uh, sold under the Coleman brand. Dimensions are 3.75 by 2.5 by 2.9. The case is 3.1 by 1.9 by 1.5. Weight is 3.8 ounces. The power is a pretty impressive 10,200 BTUs. It is made in China. This is a pretty classic uh, budget mass produced upright canister stove. Uh, price is between $12 and $15, so very inexpensive. Benefits are the price. It does have a built-in piezo igniter, as you can see right here. And it has a pretty decent case. I do like firm or harder cases, so that is a nice touch. Let's do a little bowl test and figure out how much fuel it uses for two cups of water. This is the Coleman Peak 1 stove. Dimensions are 5.1 by 5.5 by 4.3. Weight is a little bit heavy, 6.7 ounces. The power is 10,000 BTUs. Made somewhere in Asia, that's all I could get out of it. Price is a very, very reasonable, $18. As far as benefits go, it's very, very sturdy. It's a um, very strong top, so you can put quite a bit of, of uh, weight on top of it. It also has very nice flame control, which is a nice touch. Let's go ahead and boil two cups of water and measure the fuel consumption. This is 
is a stove by the company Red Camp. It looks very much like the Snow Peak Light Max. I'll show you guys that here in just a little bit. Dimensions are 3.9 by 3.9 by 3.1, and the case dimensions are 3.1 by 1.4 by 2.5. The weight is six ounces. I don't have an actual power. I don't know how many BTUs it puts out. Couldn't find that. It is made in China and costs $20. Uh, benefits include the fact that it's very compact. It has a piezo igniter built in and you can use it with propane. It states very specifically that you can use a propane adapter, which is nice. Not all of these allow you to do that. I don't really know what the difference is, but some say not to do that. Let's boil a little water and see how much fuel it uses. Next is another stove by the company Red Camp. You can see the logo right there. Dimensions are 3.4 by 4.9, and the case is 4.1 by 2.3. Weight is a very nice uh, 3.8 ounces. Again, don't know exactly what the power is, how many BTUs it puts out, although I think it's probably a little bit less than 10,000. It is made in China, costs a very, very low $10, so very inexpensive. Benefits are the nice case. I really like the case but I don't like a whole lot more about this stove. Let's boil a little water and measure the fuel. Next, we have a couple of larger stoves. This is uh, I'll just call it a large stove from GSI. Dimensions are 5 by 5 by 3.2. Weight is 5.9 ounces. Puts out a very strong 13,000 BTUs, which is pretty strong. One of the stronger stoves that we have. That, of course, is because of the size of the burner. It's made in China. Costs only $25. The benefits, it is, as I said, very powerful. It has capacity for larger pots because it is very wide and sturdy. It should perform very well in our bowl test, so let's do that and see what we get. This is a very similar looking stove. It's from the company Primus. This is their classic trail backpacking stove. This is the newest stove that I have purchased recently. Dimensions are 4.9 by 4.9 by 3.2. Weight is 6.9 ounces. Power is 10,000 BTU. Origin, it says it's made in Estonia and the price is $24.95. As far as uh, benefits, this is time tested. This is a, a classic design from Primus, which is a very well-known manufacturer of stoves. It has capacity for larger pots and it has very, very good flame control. Let's go ahead and get two cups of water boiling and see what we get. This is one of my oldest stoves that I have. This is the BRS 3000T Ultralight Titanium Stove. Dimensions are 3.3 by 3.3 by 2.7. Folded down and in the bag, it is an impressive 1.45 by 1.45 by 2. Weight is 0 0.88 ounces. It is super, super lightweight. Power is an impressive, for the size, 9200 BTU, and it is made in China. Costs about $16. Benefits are, of course, it's super lightweight, ultra compact, and it also cools off very quickly because it is made out of titanium. Let's boil some water with it. Next 
is a very nice stove from the company Optimus. This is the Optimus Crux. Dimensions are 3.2 by 2.2 by 1.3, and the weight is a very impressive 2.9 ounces. Power is also impressive with 10,200 BTUs. Made in Korea, costs $46. Benefits are it's very powerful. It also folds. If you fold this down, unlike a lot of the other stoves, if you pull this, it will actually collapse like that, so it folds down very flat. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Open it back up, you just open it and it pops up like that. It also has a pretty wide burner design, which is nice for pots that are a little bit wider. Let's boil a little bit of water with it. Next, we have the Snow Peak Light Max Titanium. Dimensions 4.9 by 4.9 by 3. Folded down, it's 2.6 by 3.1. Weight is the amazing part of this. Two ounces for this very nice stove. Don't have a power outage. I think it's 10,000 BTUs, but don't quote me on that for sure. It is made in Japan, and the price is a little bit hefty. $60 benefits. It is ultra light, super compact. It also is very wind resistant, just the way that they made this burner. It is very wind resistant on its own, even without a windscreen. Let's boil some water with it. Next, we have another stove from the company Snow Peak. This is the Gigapower 2.0. Dimensions are 3.6 by 2.0 by 1.8. Weight is a very respectable 3.2 ounces. Power is also nice at 10,000 BTUs. Origin is Korea. It is made in Korea, but designed in Japan. A lot of the Snow Peak stuff you would expect to be made in Japan, but it is not all made in Japan. Price is $50. Benefits, it does have a built-in piezo igniter, as you can see right back here has an excellent case. It's probably one of my favorite cases that comes with any of these stoves. And it is a very stable base because of the design of these four pot stands. Let's get a little water boiling and see how much fuel it uses. Okay, we're in the home stretch. We're moving on to the MSR Pocket Rockets. This is the original Pocket Rocket. Dimensions are 4.1 by 2.1 by 2. Weight is 3 ounces. Power is a little low at 8,000 BTUs. It is made, or was made in Korea when it was still made, no longer made. This was introduced in the year 2000 and replaced a little later with the next stove we're gonna take a look at. Price is uh, anywhere between $20 to $40, $40, $45 second hand on eBay. Benefits are it is very lightweight. It also has a very excellent case. I really like this case. It's easy to pop inside of stove kits or in your backpack. You're not going to have any problems with anything rubbing against your very fragile backpack material. Let's boil a little bit of water with this classic stove. <music> As we said, the Pocket Rocket was released in 2000. In 2017, MSR replaced it with this beauty, the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. Dimensions are 4.8 by 4.8 by 3.6, or 2 by 2 by 3 inside of this excellent carrying case. Weight is 2.6 ounces. Power is 8,200 BTUs. It is made in Korea. Price is $45. Benefits, very lightweight. It has an excellent case, like I said, which is excellent. Very high quality construction, and I think the price at $45 is a benefit because that is a very good value for this stove. Let's boil a little bit of water. The 
The last MSR stove we'll look at is the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. This was released in 2019. Dimensions are 4.8 by 4.8 by 3.6. Folded down, it's 3.3 by 2.2 by 1.8. The weight is a very impressive, I think, 2.9 ounces. Power is 10,400 BTUs, and it is made in Korea. Price is a little high. It's $70. Benefits, it is very lightweight for the amount of power that you get for it. It has a wide burner design and a very nice gas regulator, so you can control gas consumption and flame strength very well. It also is pretty wind resistant straight out of the box, even without a windscreen. Let's boil a little bit of water with the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe. Next, we'll look at one of my favorite stoves, the Soto Amicus. The dimensions are 3 by 4 by 3.4, or 1.7 by 1.6 by 3 folded down. Weight is 2.9 ounces. Power is 11,000 BTUs. Origin is Japan. Price is an impressive $45. I think that's a very nice price for this. As far as benefits go, it's very powerful for the size. It has an integrated piezo igniter, even though it's pretty lightweight. And it is very wind resistant, as all the Soto products are. Let's put a little bit of water to boil and see how we do with the amicus. Last but not least is probably my favorite stove, the Soto Windmaster. Dimensions are 5.7 by 5.7 by 3.9. Weight is three ounces. You can change this four-pronged pot stand for their Triflex and bring that down to 2.3 ounces, which is pretty darn impressive. Power is 11,000 BTU and it is made in Japan. Price is a reasonable $65. Benefits, it has a built-in gas regulator like the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. It's very wind resistant as we discussed in the individual video for this stove and in the comparison video to the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. It has the flexible pot stand options and the built-in piezo igniter, really everything you could ask for in a stove. Let's boil some water. Like I said earlier, this is just a representative group of stoves, and I think it's a very good representation. You have stoves as low as $10 and as expensive as $70. And what's interesting is, despite all this, the results are all pretty reasonable. The fastest stove was 2 minutes 4 seconds, the slowest stove was 3 minutes 39 seconds. The most efficient stove was 6 grams of fuel and the least efficient 11 grams of fuel. So not a big variety. The majority of them took anywhere between eight or nine grams of fuel. The fastest stove was the Soto Windmaster and the most efficient at six grams usage was the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. Again, if you guys want more information on any of these stoves, there'll be detailed reviews down in the description. There's also several videos putting some of these stoves head to head to see how they compare. In particular, you might want to check out my Pocket Rocket battle between the original Pocket Rocket, the Pocket Rocket 2, and the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. I also look at a battle between the Soto Windmaster and the Pocket Rocket Deluxe. A lot of other videos, so just check it down below. If you're asking what my personal favorite stove is, it is the Soto Windmaster. I think it's the most uh, ultralight for the most that you get. It's, it's kind of got everything you could want in a stove, in my opinion. Can't beat it. Soto Windmaster is my favorite. It also is one of the more expensive, but if you're asking, that's what I would choose. Not sure if you guys are aware, but I have an entire playlist, not just on these stoves, but all kinds of stoves, wood stoves, alcohol stoves, solid fuel stoves. Very cool playlist, so check it down below. Do me a big favor, guys. I hope a lot of people will be watching this video. If you like it, hit the thumbs up down below. It really helps spread things across YouTube and really encourages me to keep making these videos. It has taken hours to be out here doing all this. I enjoy it, but it is nice to get a little feedback, 
So hit that thumbs up down below. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscription button. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any videos, hit that notification bell and you'll be the first to know. This is also part of my ultimate series. So make sure you check out down below another playlist for my ultimate series. It's a pretty cool series and this was a great video to add to it. As always guys, I appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Stay tuned for more videos soon.